So then in your new book, The Cultural Advantage, uh, empowering your people to drive innovation. Congratulations, and we can see the cover of the, of the book. It's a blueprint to designing, implementing, and sustaining a culture that will not only celebrate innovation, but will input or impute in the everything in your company and in your people. Can you tell us more? And I know that there are eight uh, components, so maybe you can tell us two of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's a book um, that's been in the works the last five years or so, my, my passion project, as it were. I've been really fortunate to go to hundreds of companies around the world from all industries, all shapes and sizes, and learn from them and, and see what makes them tick. And it became very apparent to me that the best companies, the companies that were innovating and changing on a regular basis, having success, had common mm -hmm. cultural traits um, in line with one another. Yes. And actually, I managed to boil it down to eight key things. So, for example, one of them is um, running towards technology, embracing technology and not being scared of it. Many companies, Kodak would be a great example, invented the digital camera, yes. but were very worried about the technology and left it on the sidelines. And we know what happened to Kodak. Yes. Near, near bankruptcy and nearly out of business completely. So the best companies are embracing technology and what they do mm -hmm. and that. That would be one of the cultural principles. Another one um, is creating creativity with constraints. Mm -hmm. Again, we've seen many, many companies, and Nokia would be the famous example, who threw money and resources at product development and didn't have good outcomes. And what I noticed in the most successful companies were they imposed self-made constraints, for example, spending less money, having less resources, yeah. having less time in order to focus the minds on innovation and their challenges. Yeah. And they do that with great success. So eight things culturally that you can do. And, and the book goes through these eight. I give hints and tips. And it's kind of like a menu. You don't have to do yeah. everything, but you can choose what you want to do. It applies to all industries, all the sizes, all shapes and forms. And what are the other, let's say, the five components or the six components without going into details? Okay, so you put me on the spot to remember each each of them. Now. <laughs> but I mean, the, you know, I always say leaders they must participate in culture. Mm -hmm. So this is really important. The leaders yeah. that outsource the culture don't understand the, the power of culture. So that's really important. So don't worry, I will put the link below so that people can buy it from Amazon. Again, thank you for that, Dan. And again, for the audience, tune, tune in next time for my final question with Dan. <laughs>